Hello, welcome to APDL. If you're watching this video, thanks for downloading APDL. and We hope you'll like it. This is going to be a quick, bare minimum setup guide just to get you set it, uh, get your settings configured, the absolute minimum uh, amount required to get you started in APDL so you can enter flights and start logging your legality and your flight time as quickly as possible. And you can go back and set your settings more detailed at a later time. So the first thing we're going to do when you open APDL for the first time, you should come to this uh, login screen. I have a brand new user account uh, created called newuser at ncsoftware.com with a password. If you don't have an account, you can go to the create account link here at the bottom and create a new account. If you already have an account at ncsoftware.com, you can use that account here and sign in. I can uh, tap this menu button here and go back to the uh, splash screen. One of the first things I want to show is uh, you can change the name here that uh, comes up on your splash screen to personalize your copy of APDL. So in this case, Captain APDL, I'm going to tap that and delete it. And I can type in whatever I like here. I'm going to go with new user. And I can hit return, and that will be saved for me just as a little personalization. APDL does come with a 90-day free trial. And you can start using that to uh, get a feel for it and decide if you'd like to continue using it after your 90-day trial period is over. If you decide you like APDL and you want to continue using it after your 90-day trial, you'd have to go to the My Account screen here and you can purchase a subscription within the app or from ncsoftware.com directly. So let's get started with our settings. First thing I'm going to point out here is in the general settings uh, area. We have two time zone options. In APDL, obviously we have a lot of areas where times are shown, duty times, report, release, um, flight times when it comes to scheduled departure and arrival, out, off, on, and in actual times, uh, things of that nature. When we're displaying those times to you, how do you want those displayed? Would that be local time zone for that particular airport, uh, UTC perhaps, um, maybe your domicile time, or maybe a custom time zone if you live in an area, a time zone that is different from your domicile. The same for entering times, whenever you go to enter a time, to edit a time, um, whether it be out, off, on, in, or scheduled times, duty times, do you want to enter those in the same time zone, different time zone? For example, if you want to enter your times directly off of your ACARS display, and that comes straight off in UTC, Maybe you don't want to have that entered in uh, local, but you'd rather have them displayed in local. You can choose local for display and UTC for entry, which is what our default setting is here. That's all we're going to do in uh, general for right now. Going back to schedule importer or moving on to the schedule importer settings. We're going to go down to the duty period adjustments setting section, and we have this auto adjust duty times option. If you want to have APDL automatically adjust your report and release times, prior to your first flight and after your last flight of the day or of your duty period. You can enable this setting here by selecting this switch to the on position and then for domicile, non-domicile, international, deadhead, etc. you can uh, select different report and release times based on how your company's contract handles those report and release times respectively. This is applicable only to trips that are imported using the schedule importer. There's another setting that we'll get to shortly for manually created trips. Coming down to the uh, airline settings here, if this was your first time opening the app, this would show um, set your current employer because it's blank. Uh, I did go through a previous run through of this and uh, just went through and selected an airline. We'll say Alaska this time. I want to say set as current employer. And it sets to uh, Alaska. I can give it a hire date. Let's say I was hired September 1st, 2015 and I'm presently employed. My domicile, I can choose. I'm just going to leave that as JFK, but you can search through our airport database here and pick a domicile. Do you want to use your domicile as theater? With 117 regulations, if you are doing international flights, you can choose to use your domicile as theater or not. Because I do have the Allegiant Air um, entry made in there, I can see that as my previous airline uh, employment history. And that's used for the resume settings, which we'll cover in a different video. You should come through and uh, adjust your pay rate and your per diem uh, rate. I'm just going to leave those there. You can enter in whatever your appropriate pay rate is. 
Minimum guarantee, we do keep a track of minimum guarantee in the payroll section, so you should enter that in the uh, format shown here, 75 plus 00 for hours plus minutes. If your airline uses duty rigs or trip rigs, you would want to configure those here. If applicable, turn on the appropriate switch and then set it to uh, a 2 to 1 rig or 200% uh, or etc., whatever uh, is appropriate. Here's the duty period adjustments uh, I mentioned just previously for manually created trips. This is every trip that you manually create and anything that's not automatically imported or not imported from the uh, schedule importer at apdl.net. Last setting down here at the bottom, minimum ground turn time. Uh, what is the minimum time that you consider realistic for parking at the gate and being able to turn the aircraft and depart again when you're behind schedule and you're trying to make up time. And we'll talk about that. That's a uh, setting that is used for a projected mode, which is will be discussed in a different video. Um, we're going down to the crew members page. Uh, we do not have any crew members listed here. So what you should do is create a new crew member. Uh, in this case, we're going to create yourself. I'm going to call this new user. I'm going to say my company ID. 10497, I'm going to say I'm a first officer and save. Then I want to open the detail page for myself and set as default first officer. What this will do, and I'm going to say, what this will do is uh, puts a check mark by my name and I can see that new user is the default first officer here. That'll make sure that my name gets entered into all flights that are manually created or imported from the schedule importer as the first officer and I don't have to come back later whenever I have time to set up the crew members section and add myself to all the previous flights that, <coughs> excuse me, the previous flights that I may have previously entered. Uh, next, I'm gonna to go to the approaches section. The default setting for the default approach type is none. If you would like to log your approaches as visual, uh, you can set that as your default, or you can set ILS or whatever you like as your default approach you can create a custom approach here with the plus button at the top right and what this will do is set uh, the default approach that will be entered for every new flight that you enter into APDL imported or manually created so that saves you a little bit of time during uh, creation of new flights and head down to the payroll section here um, we'll start with the block payroll section you want to take a look through these and make sure that they are appropriate for your airline uh, operations or your contract. And in this case, the block payroll category is um, a standard flight. There's no overage, override pay. Um, it's not a reserve flight. It's not a deadhead, anything like that. It's just a standard line flight. Uh, for the legality options that we have up here, apply to flight time, apply to legality, apply to pay. For the most part, those should be pretty standard for all of our preloaded categories. What you can do is set your minimum credit down here. If you have a minimum day policy in your um, contract, you can say, oh, well, any day that I fly, I get a minimum of four hours. Regardless of the actual number of hours flown, I can say minimum credit is four plus zero zero, and that will be credited at four hours minimum any day that a block payroll category leg is selected. Um, if I have, instead of minimum credit, I have a leg rig or both, can turn on the leg rig here and say, you know, a block of six uh, would credit 12 hours if it's a two to one ratio or whatever the, the case may be. Uh, this is currently the default category. Uh, I don't need to change that. If you do have a different category you'd like to be default, you can set that now. And this is just going to help you get your payroll uh, settings and uh, a little bit more accurate right off the start instead of having to go back and change things later. Uh, particularly of interest is the deadhead category. Uh, we'll go and mention that quickly. Um, at my airline, deadhead pay is 50%, so I would have to go in and change that to uh, a 1 to 2 ratio, so deadhead legs are paid at 50% rather than 100%. All right, after payroll, let's head down to the position section. As you can see, the captain pilot flying is the selected default category. I'm sorry, the default position. Since I set myself up as an FO, I would need to go in and set as default for the uh, FO pilot flying or pilot monitoring if you are primarily monitoring. 
and the only times uh, after that you would have to manually make an entry to change this would be if you were the pilot monitoring. Next, let's go to regulations. APDL does use an uh, automatic algorithm to determine your legality based on the legs that you fly during the duty period. If APDL cannot determine your appropriate regulation based on the legs you have entered, it will revert back to the default you have set here. Uh, if you're a regular line holder, you should probably select 117 un unaugmented. And if you're a reserve uh, pilot, you should probably select 117 reserve. I will go down to the calendar section here. If you want to have APDL sync all your entries to your calendar uh, for sharing with family, friends, uh, etc. So they can follow your schedule and, and see uh, where, where you are and what you're doing. You can turn that setting on here or just for your personal use. Now you get to cho choose which calendar you want to use. Um, any calendar that is uh, configured in your iOS settings for your device you can sync to. I have test calendar selected here. And you can select if you want to include flight segments, deadheads, or non-flying duty uh, in the calendar. You can select any combination of those and have those uh, sync to your calendar. Every time you save a flight and edit a flight, those times will be updated. Uh, last thing on this menu here is the notifications page. I won't go through each one of these, but you should look through these and see uh, which of these settings that you do want to have enabled for notifications within APDL. Majority of these are going to be pop-up notifications that slide up from the bottom of the screen to notify you of things that are happening in your schedule or in APDL with your flight entries, things like that. Uh, I do want to point out the during rest period. Um, you can change the time frame or the time prior to your duty that APDL will give you a notification of your upcoming duty period and your legality and uh, your status for that day. Uh, if you want to be notified one hour prior to your show time, uh, you can leave that default here or you can change it uh, as according to, uh, to your preferences. That's all for the settings page there. One last thing you can configure is the status board at the top of the menu. First time we open this, we get a pop-up tool tip here that you can uh, customize this page. We do have three tabs at the top for each phase of duty, off-duty, in-flight, or blocked out, and on-duty but not flying. You can select each one of these and customize those individually for uh, the widgets that you'd like to display. Uh, you can go to the edit menu here and scroll through and see the widgets we have available. If you want to view more of these, you can turn them on by hitting the plus. You can delete them by hitting the minus, and you can rearrange them by dragging on the three dash icon over to the right. And this can be customized independently for each one of these tabs at the top. Uh, additionally, you can tap on the individual widgets themselves for some of them and get uh, the data to change the display. And this is one of the screens that you can configure to your uh, liking. That's been a quick setup video for uh, how to get APDL going quickly. If you're interested in setting up APDL with more detailed settings, Please see our individual videos for each area, each area of the settings menu for more details on those settings. Thanks for watching.